Welcome back to the lab. You were watching EE for everyone. Man, it's been a little intense the last couple episodes. Usually, I'm up against one opponent and one opponent alone. Usually, we are wrestling with physics. No way around that. We're just wrestling with physics, but for the last month, for the last two months, I don't remember. It's kind of a blur. We have been fighting a completely different enemy. We've been fighting the clock. <laughs> We've been fighting the clock. Yeah. Um, that's to say, I had a lot of fun. Uh, this is exactly how much fun I had. These are all the fats. These are all the parts that we destroyed. Look at all these. These are the fets we destroyed while tuning the inverter. One Atmel Micro, one gate driver that we thought was dead, turns out it wasn't. One relay that we <laughs> vaporized by pumping 20 amps through. <laughs> yes, this is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. Um, yeah. If you want some blown up fets, let me know. Throw a comment down. I'll save these. I'll bring them with me. So I think I've got enough room in my luggage to bring a couple broken parts. So if you want a UPS Phase 2 Rev 1, Rev A FET, hit me up in the comments. I'll send you one of these. Maybe with a little note, maybe with a sticker. But drop your name. We'll pick a few random lucky winners. We'll shoot it out. It'll be sweet. Um, I'm going to just walk through the current state of all the daughter cards. So hopefully I don't need to go back and rewatch the entire series to figure out where we left things. So, let's start with the inverter. The inverter. Something is wrong with these FETs. Something is making it so that there's DC applied on the output, which should never happen. Even though the FETs test okay, maybe there's just more dead than I thought, and we just need to replace all four FETs. Maybe the gate driver's bad. We didn't blow a fuse. All the fuses are good. The output filter tested okay. There's not a whole lot that could be wrong other than that. The feedback on the uh, analog voltage feedback. See these resistors right there that you thought were so good? Let me zoom in. Uh, remember, remember these resistors, good friend? Yeah, when you take these and you don't give them a solid ground reference and you route them underneath a giant pad of copper that's switching at a couple hundred kilohertz, it couples on a lot of noise. <laughs> and who boy did it. So there's a lot of noise coming back and we basically got a useless DC level representative of how noisy it was rather than any real feedback. Um, yeah. This micro soldered on like a champ. That worked great. Fan controller worked great. Programming over JTAG worked great. This whole module worked very well. Even the current feedback was pretty good despite the compromises we need to make with the current feedback. We implemented that well. Had a solid pretty solid ground reference. Yeah. Card edge worked great. Like the card edge connectors themselves worked great. Um, yeah. So it's really just the only thing that's wrong with the inverter is the fact that we damaged it while doing the 500 watt test. Honestly, we might have cracked a solder ball under the micro. Could be that. Not exactly sure. But all in all, this card worked okay. A couple, couple little things didn't work. Overall, pretty good. That ought to be enough to jog my memory. Let's just get that reinstalled. Yeah. Okay. Now for 
Now for the beast. Oh yeah, and something is preventing that inverter from getting up to 250 volts DC. It tends to want to go nuclear instead. Magnetics are fine. Same thing here. Magnetics, the output stage is fine. Honestly, I bet this could get up to a kilowatt. This might even be able to get up to two kilowatts. This converter is working great. The problem is we don't have a load that we can pump that much power through without it destroying itself. So there's that. Um, maybe consider lower FETs or larger package FETs, like actually switching to a TO247. Um, I think that would be a pretty wise decision. Oh, the inverter. If you're gonna spin that, move it so you can actually use the clips. The clips hit the inductor. Come on. Anyways, yeah, this one doesn't have that problem. This one actually escapes most of the fundamental problems of the inverter. Um, everything seems to have appropriate derating. Everything seems fine. You need to fix the logic level thing. The output enable is tied to the wrong state. Make sure you fix that. Yeah, this one's working great. The control loop is stable on your TL594. Love these indicator LEDs on the gate drivers for the error. Add those to every instance of that. Basically, the LED just turns on whenever this asserts low, which is when one of the rails has failed or your FET has shorted gate to source. Battery input works great. Those press fit terminals are awesome. The input filter worked great. Fuses are good. Uh, battery charger was working a treat. The step down. It's kind of weird. I think it's all fine. I think it's all working great. But something about the way that I did these fuses makes it so that when this fuse blows, that fuse blows. Sorry, I, I'm a little out of frame. But something makes it such that when this fuse blows, when the big fuse blows, the secondary fuse blows as well. That's not great. Not sure exactly what's doing that. And I think it might be this cap, this giant bulk cap being discharged, right? Because we Maybe this fuse should be coming from the main input rather than through the secondary fuse. Because right now it comes in through here, gets fused, goes through the common mode choke, comes down and comes here. But that means that when this fuse blows because there's a downstream short, this opens and now it's still looking for energy so it sucks it out of that downstream, takes a gulp of current and then blows the second fuse as well. I think that's what's happening. So maybe swing that second lug of the fuse over here, right? It'd be a pretty easy change in fact you can just rotate that footprint I don't even think we need to change the board that much that'd be like perfect so maybe do that you'd lose your common mode filtering on the input but I think that would be well worth it yeah this daughter card should be rip roaring and ready to go just buy an electronic load that can get up to a couple kilowatts and uh, a couple hundred volts and you will be set so that's that's about there all it it's about all there is to that there's only one more thing to talk about Mainboard. What the heck is going on with the mainboard? Good thought on the four layer board. Hazel saved a lot of money. Unfortunately, introduced some issues with the micro by not having a solid ground reference for all of your critical signals. Not sure if the Mac works, never really got to test it. Not sure if the USB 2.0 works. Never loaded code that really instantiated that, but I think the USB would be fine. Not so sure about the Ethernet Mac, but it could be a soldering issue. The power input works great, hollow point of load converters work great, they're stable, they can output like 4 amps, it's plenty of power, and uh, it seems like the bi-directional 24 volt implementation was awesome. Oh, that's the one of the minor tweaks that's needed on the battery daughter card. Uh, basically we kind of added in a provision that wasn't great, we added in a provision for the micro to disable the step down when we're charging, but that's kind of irrelevant because it pulls like... 50 milliamps from the batteries and we can charge up to like an amp so yeah uh, just leave that enable all the time beef up your battery charger if you need to but yeah switching that out of circuit caused a little transient glitch that would reset everything no good anywho display connector works great the USB charging through the front USB ports with that front panel header works awesome LEDs working great RGB is working as well well, again, the daughter card interface actually is, is working excellently well. Maybe add like a jumper on the board 
So you can just enable all four daughter cards for testing for when you don't want to worry about the mainboard micro. Like just to leave it on and let her go. That'd be a great jumper to have. This isolation amplifier, either this micro's ADC isn't reading it right, or there's a lot of noise coming back that's making this not so great. In retrospect, perhaps we should have used the outer layers instead of the inner layers and flooded the high voltage bus reference across the whole thing so that this has a solid ground reference. In fact, that might be the source of a lot of our issues is that this doesn't have solid ground reference. So there's this big current loop that we're making over here and it's kind of nasty. Plus free parallel plate capacitor. Like who would say no to that? So yeah, keep the little strip for the high voltage side, but the reference flood that flood that. Other than that, I love these little isolated pucks and the way we implemented that. The isolated power remains great. Honestly, the whole thing's working very well, except for the fact that the mainboard micro resets whenever you kick on the high voltage bus and you draw current from it. So I guess that's the current state. We never tested the RS45 leaving the board but I have no reason to suspect that it doesn't work. We never tested the external sync protocol. Um, those are all on the to-do list when we get a chance to pick this project back up. Um, in general, the architecture is fairly elegant. Not a whole lot of waste. I think it worked okay. Um, it just needs a little bit of refinement, especially on the inverter. A little bit of refinement on the battery, but honestly, we can do that with bodge wires. No need to spend the fab. I think we just needed more layers on the main board. So we'll need to look into that. We'll need to look into making it a six layer board and just deal with the extra cost of that. So, wow. <laughs> it's really time to put this on the shelf. That is weird to say. It's like, I knew it was coming I knew this day was coming. I knew that we would need to step away at some point, but like, just didn't expect it to be so soon. Like, if we could have approached our testing very differently if we would have had a little more time, but that just wasn't in the cards for us, and that's okay. Not forever. We will revisit this, but like I said, it could be six months, 10 months, a year. Uh, all that said, don't be discouraged. We've got some great content coming up. We're going to kind of do a deep dive into some educational stuff. We're going to pick up the comparator series again. It's been too long. It's been too long since we had kind of a uh, instructional, educational. We've been doing kind of this off-the-cuff stuff, and it's been awesome. But I want to get back to some of that educational stuff again. That'd be really good. That'd be really fun. So, looking forward to that. And uh, once we finish up some of building up the basics, the next step for us will be the uh, electronic load. I've got a lot of a lot of questions about gate drive. A lot of questions about linear MOSFETs in particular in the comments. That's been a particular interest area for a couple people. Um, I don't remember who made the original suggestion. I think it was either tested to destruction or no corporation. I think it was one of you two. Um, anyways, thanks for the inspiration. <laughs> I know I've been kind of sitting on that for six months or however long it's been, but yeah, I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's gonna be what's next. Um, yeah, so I guess to wrap this, I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to say. Um, maybe this video was more for me than for you. Maybe you'd like the closure, but I mean, really, I need to know where this is when we pick it up. So I'm probably going to release it just so you guys can see it too. So I don't forget about it. But this video is definitely more for me than for you. Uh, yeah status update the end of a phase what should we call this we're in the ups phase two i think we're still in phase two we'll call this the alpha build this is the alpha build of the phase two ups 
Looking forward to beta. Looking forward to beta. Looking forward to Rev 2. Got a lot of good memories with this. We're going to make some more. All right, guys. Sorry we didn't have more positive conclusion, but 500 watts is nothing to sneeze at. That is one quarter of our desired output power. The other EPS was more than an order of magnitude. We were like 150 out of two kilowatts. That's, that's not very good. 500, that's much better. I truly believe this without any change to the fabs. If we had enough time to sit down and really tweak it, I bet we could get it up to a kilowatt. But hopefully our betas will be able to get up to a kilowatt right out of the gate and then we tweak it up to two kilowatts. So that'd be pretty sweet. That would be pretty sweet. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching EE for everyone. Thank you to those that have been very patient with us as we uh, kind of hurried through this testing and trying to get these boards brought up and working. We're going to put this in storage. We're going to pack it up nice, get it, you know, get the desk kent out, get it all in the pink bubble wrap and the static bags and the whole nine. We're going to get this packed up really well. So six months from now, 10 months from now, we can pull it out. When we have time to come back to it, we'll pull it out. We'll dust it off and we will keep on trucking. So with that, I just want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support as we conclude this project, put it on the shelf, and circle back in a few months. It's been real. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. This literally wouldn't have been possible without you. Really appreciate you chipping a few bucks in the hat and keeping us running, keeping the lights on. You guys are awesome. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.